I've heard of her. Her inability to fly makes her really clumsy. Hornets, large and imposing buzzing hymenopterans, often evoke extremely negative emotions in people ranging from disgust to fear and even panic attacks. They are among the most well-known and above all among the most disliked and persecuted Polish insects. But do we really need to be so afraid of them? In today's episode I'll present to you a few facts about these awe-inspiring and I must admit truly beautiful insects. We'll check if they really are. Oh no, it fell. Uh, we'll check if they really are that dangerous, if we should be afraid of them, and what they do in life. You're stomping around, and that's fine. Like many other videos on my channel, the story of this one is pretty random. Well, today, while I was shopping at the store near my apartment building, I noticed something scurrying on the ground. And that something wasn't a frog, it wasn't a beetle, it was a hornet. Initially, I was surprised it walked rather than flew. It turns out that it either fell victim to some bird or something else, because it's not able to fly. So, since I'm a bit strange, I decided that I couldn't pass up such an opportunity and I just grabbed that hornet as quickly as possible. It's a worker, a stinger. It has a fully functional stinger, but as you saw yourself, it doesn't use that stinger. At least it hasn't used it yet. I took the hornet with me, fed it a bit of sugar water, and that's how this episode came to be. What you see here is quite large, by worker standards, a worker of the European hornet, that is Vespa Crabro. The European hornet is the only hornet that naturally occurs in Poland. We don't have any Asian hornets here, or any other such species. I've already received messages from you more than once, like, hey, can you check what this is, because I think it's an Asian hornet. And always, absolutely always, it turned out to be nothing else but this, the European hornet. So the official information is this, Asian hornets do not occur in Poland, and what's more, they do not occur in Europe. All these stories about Asian hornets in Europe actually refer to a hornet that in fact is not an Asian hornet, even though it comes from Asia. Specifically, I'm referring to Vespa velutina, which is spreading in Western Europe but hasn't been discovered in Poland yet. However, it has been found in Germany and will probably appear here as well over time. Currently, however, Vespa crabro, which is the European hornet, or also known as the dangerous hornet, that's the name I've heard, is... The fact that it can't fly makes it really clumsy, seriously, and here... Okay, I'll set it aside so it doesn't fall. In summary, there is one hornet species, which is essentially a large wasp. That means it belongs to the wasp family, Vespidae, and it's what's called a true wasp. So you could say it's a wasp on steroids. However, it belongs to a separate genus called Vespa. As for its appearance, well, I think there's no need to introduce the hornet to anyone. Practically since childhood, we've been taught that hornets are dangerous, that you shouldn't get close to them, that they can sting, that it will hurt, and that in general you should stay far away from them. And if one gets into your apartment, then... A slipper. But are they really that bad? Hornets are surprisingly gentle creatures, to a greater extent than commonly thought. If we're not near their nest, and as we know, they build pretty large nests, and as long as we don't stumble upon such a nest, don't poke around in it, or don't try to scare them, basically nothing will happen to us. A hornet might just fly by and not even pay any attention to us. As you can see, this hornet, even though it's armed with a stinger, isn't using it, because it considers me simply as a surface, not as a threat. I'm not wearing strong perfume, so the scent stimuli also don't make it inclined to attack even though if it did sting, it would hurt. Going back to their appearance, which I think is familiar to everyone, they are large black yellow burgundy or black yellow red wasps. And it's exactly those burgundy or red elements that combined with their size and their behavior make it hard to mistake a hornet for anything else, although some insects really try to resemble hornets, for example some moths from the clearwing family or even some hoverflies, which are non-stinging wasps and don't have that characteristic hornet waist. In Poland, there is also a species called the median wasp, known as Dolichowes pula media. And because of the presence of red elements on the bodies of the queens of these wasps, and the fact that they are close relatives of hornets, sometimes a queen of the median wasp can be mistaken for a worker of the European hornet. It's also worth noting that the European hornet, despite its name, does not limit its range exclusively to Europe. We can also find it across a vast area of Asia, all the way to Japan, and it has been introduced to North America, including Canada. And because of this enormous range, the hornet has also developed different color forms. And depending on where we encounter it, these hornets will differ, including in the pattern on their abdomen or thorax. 
A bit about the life of hornets. Their life more or less looks like this. In the spring, young queens look for a place to establish a nest. Once they find such a place, they lay the first batches of eggs in the initially built nest, from which workers hatch. And these workers have the task, first, of feeding the next larvae, second, defending this, well, the beginning of the nest, and third, maintaining its proper temperature. And the number of these hornets increases, increases, increases throughout the whole summer, until the last generation is born, which consists of fertile males and fertile females, who will become new queens in the future. The rest of the workers and males will not survive the winter in our climate and will die when the temperature drops below 10 degrees. The new queens will overwinter, enter diapos, and in the spring fly out to find a place to build a new nest, repeating the cycle. As for the role of the hornet in nature and its relationship with humans, well, the situation here depends on the place, and opinions on this topic are divided. One rabbi will say yes, another rabbi will say no. Hornets can be useful, meaning they can eat insects that are considered pests from a human perspective, but it also works the other way around. Unfortunately, hornets often hunt bees, which, as we know, are very useful, and in this way, hornets themselves become pests that, for example, harm beekeepers. Moreover, besides feeding on insects, hornets can also feed on, for example, tree sap or fruit juices, and in this way they cause damage in orcharding and forestry. So, the point of view depends a bit on which industry we're in, but I believe that as long as these hornets have their nests somewhere deep in the forest, let them live there, they don't harm anyone. It's worse, however, when they build their nests close to people. Because unfortunately, due to habitat degradation, these hornets can build nests in attics, in bird boxes, or in any other place near human homes. If hornet nests are nearby, remember that hornets will defend their nest, which can become a problem. In that case, call the fire department or a specialized company to remove the hornets. And you need to get rid of such a nest, because it poses a direct threat to people. Speaking of the threat to people, let's finally move on to the most important issue, which is the venom. There's a very interesting theory here, and this theory says that hornet venom is weaker than bee venom. Because look, why do bees have venom? Bees sting primarily to defend the hive, protect the honey and other resources inside, and safeguard the queen. And such hives are often attacked by mammals that are eager for honey. So bee venom, which contains melitin, has to be strong enough to drive such a mammal away. On the other hand, hornets don't use venom, or rather, they only use venom in extreme cases to defend the nest. For them, the stinger is mainly used during hunting, to immobilize their prey. Since they feed on smaller insects, they catch them, sting them, and the prey is subdued. So, in theory, their venom could be weaker because it only needs to work on insects, which are animals much smaller than mammals. Is that true? Honestly, I don't know. However, the truth is that hornets, compared to other wasps or bees, inject more venom because of their size. That's the truth, and a single sting is about 0.2 mg of venom. And there are different stories here, for example, that someone died from three, four, or five hornet stings. By the way, they can also bite because they have mandibles. Those stories are nonsense. Well, for the venom alone to kill a person, I'm not talking here about cases of allergy to the venom and the resulting anaphylactic shock, but strictly about the effect of the venom itself, like how a certain dose of cobra venom is lethal to a human. It's fatal, no one can survive it. With hornets, there's quite a range, and it's from 10 to 90 mgjangs per kilogram of body weight. I'll leave the math to you, but in short, with my weight and assuming I'm not allergic, it would take several hundred, if not a few thousand stings for me to actually die from the venom. And since usually only a small percentage of hornets defend the nest because that's their role, such numbers practically never happen. But the fact is, if we get even 10 stings, it's incredibly painful. <sighs> Fortunately, I've never had the chance to be stung by a hornet in my life, but I have been stung by a wasp and by a bee. Ow, 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 ow. That little critter really got me good. It was unpleasant. And since we're talking about stingers, here's an interesting fact. Hornet stingers, just like those of all other members of the wasp family, are smooth. In other words, hornets, wasps, and paper wasps can sting and inject their venom multiple times. Unlike, for example, bees from the genus Apis, such as Apis mellifera, which is the honeybee we all know. Well, the honeybee stinger is barbed, meaning it has small hooks on it. And it's precisely because of this that bees unfortunately die after stinging, because those barbs prevent them from pulling the stinger out of our body. The stinger and part of the bee's insides remain behind after stinging, making it impossible for the bee to survive, leading to its death. And this also applies only to females, to sum up the most important information. 
The European Hornet is the only naturally occurring Hornet species in Poland. It isn't super aggressive, unless we get too close to the nest. Its venom won't kill an adult human, even if 10 of them sting us, unless we have an allergy. They can be useful or not, it all depends on your point of view. And the last feature I mentioned at the beginning of the video, hornets are really beautiful. I mean, Mother Nature is clearly telling us here not to get close to such an insect, so don't do at home what I'm doing now. Because if an insect is equipped with black and yellow bright stripes, that's a clear and straightforward signal like, don't touch me or I'll kill you. And here it really works, we know what hornets are armed with, we know they have a stinger, of course a stinger, and here's an important piece of information. Only and exclusively the workers and queens have a stinger, so basically the females. Why? Well, the stinger is nothing more than an ovipositor, transformed through evolution, which is an organ used for laying eggs. Many insects and other creatures possess an ovipositor. And here, hornets are a great example of such evolution, where the ovipositor has simply been transformed into a weapon. So it can't be any other way. Only females can have such a stinger. Males don't have stingers. They can't do anything to us, they can't sting us. And this also applies to bees, to wasps, to that big black bee I've been trying to record material about, and to practically all stinging insects. Stinging insects are a group of hymenopterans that are equipped with a stinger, which is pretty obvious. And the hornet, among others, belongs to the stinging insects. I'm putting you down now. This female, I'm not sure what happened to her. She's trying to fly but can't. And seriously, she's so clumsy, she keeps falling over, twisting around, I think she might even have one leg injured. And I don't really know what to do with her, because damn, if I let her go, she won't make it on her own. She'll just die or some bird will eat her or something like that. I have a moral dilemma because I'm not going to keep a hornet, since hornets can't really be kept as far as I know. They don't do well in captivity and it's just not possible. I feel bad letting her go, especially since she doesn't sting me, which is nice. I'll consider it. What would you do if you were me? I know some people would immediately resort to violence, but... But still, it's a shame about such an insect, you can't say it's not! I hope this episode showed you that hornets are indeed killing machines, but for humans they only pose a potential threat if we attack them. And really, compared to other wasps, they are relatively calm insects, so there's no need to panic. Of course, if something like that flies into our apartment, it's not pleasant at all. Sometimes, a sleeper is the only solution if someone is scared or doesn't feel comfortable around such insects. But still, let's try to let them out, because they can also do something good for us. And I'll leave you with that. See you in the next video. Bye!